but not a brand new cool Digital the dance, invisible rules Sitting on some brand new shoes The bitch got a bag, but ain't got a clue We just got some brand new food It's standing on a 10, it's not gonna lose Yeah, 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 yeah Brand new drip, no stylus Brand new bitch, low mileage Brand new sticks with a hundred rounds on I ain't never seen an outlook finer Cut the bitch off, she was starting my page I ain't never seen a bitch so childish Nigga got smoke, tryna ride my wave He make it to the water with the powder Yeah, Fuck all these niggas, they mamas and brothers and cousins I came with them bands Found a complaint of Versace, these joggers ain't come with no pockets I need me some pants I was just sitting in the cell with a nigga Who got triple life and went tell on this man Swear when I take a good lick of my life I salute on the mirror like, bro, you the man Yeah, 25k y'all blue strips She don't talk, but the bitch got loose lips I was sent with the plug, eat roof crisps Welcome back to another episode of the Randy Wilson Podcast. I'm your host, Randy Wilson. This is episode 58, and we are almost at the end of the season. It is still 2021. Thank you for joining in. This is another podcast coming to you today with one of the goats, for sure, out of the 804, Fresh Porter. Yeah. What's up, Fresh? Yeah, yeah. Right, thank you for having me, my dog. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. I'm really excited to get into this conversation, man. This is one that people been asking about. Like this yeah. one, this one, I'm, and I'm glad we've got the opportunity to do it. Uh, before I get into that, though, let me make sure we take care of business and make sure that everyone drop down, hit that subscribe button, hit the notifications button and follow, please, the Randy Wilson podcast. This podcast will be aired everywhere that podcasts are played. Uh, however, I strongly encourage you to go over to YouTube and check out the Randy Wilson podcast, or you can check me out at randywilsonpodcast.com. But without further ado, Fresh Porter. Yeah, yeah. Fresh. What's happening, my Fresh. Dog? Listen, man, listen. Fresh, I uh I I kind of feel like I was I don't I don't I don't think I was late. I don't think I was late. I I just feel like when I just feel like all of a sudden, man, you just kind of blew up like fast though. Like I don't, I don't feel like I was late because, but when I learned about Fresh Porter, it was like a storm. Yeah, it was yeah. Just like whoosh. Uh, yeah. I remember, I think I remember hearing about you, but I think what really, personally, I remember seeing you rock the uh, the foreign, the foreign, uh, my man Chris with Foreign Exchange. Point of saying, yeah, that's my guy, man. Like I remember seeing you when I saw you wear that those clothes that stood out to me. And uh I immediately started tapping in, trying to get familiar. Uh my guy Uriah down in Petersburg, he put me on a lot of folks from the Berg. And uh yeah. man, I mean, your name came with just so much like acclaim. Like <laughs> the I mean. The rumor is, and I don't think it's really a rumor. I mean, a lot of people will say Fresh Porter is the hottest artist right now coming at 804. I, I hear that from all the tastemakers, the influencers, the people who got their ear to the street, and even yeah, some yeah. of the radio personalities. They're saying Fresh Porter is the next is the next one. How do you feel with that, Fresh? Uh, I still feel like there's a lot of work to be put in. You feel what I'm I appreciate all the compliments and the big ups and stuff like that, but... Uh, Man, it's still a lot of work to put in. You got a lot of talented artists out in the 804. So for me to even be mentioned in Virginia, period, you feel what I'm saying? So for me to be mentioning that, I, I like that. I like that. You feel what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. right now, I'm like, I'm at the point of my career where I, 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 okay, we conquered the 804. We still, we still working on Virginia. And we're going to work this coast, that coast. We're trying to conquer the world. So my ambition always been been big you know what i'm saying my ambition always been big so i want to be the be the hottest artist in the world that's um, real and i, and I want to get into that because i'm i am curious a little bit about how how you are approaching this from a virginia standpoint from a regional standpoint and ultimately the goal is for you to take over the world um but let's go back i mean i did a, doing a little bit of research uh uh i, I read kind of how you came up with your name uh, yeah, yeah, I think you had some Fresh Prince of Bel Air influences. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. You know that when I was young, mm -hmm. and for real, like one of my dogs had called me. My dog in the fed, he in the feds, he had called me. He was like, "Man, uh, you remember I started calling you that first? He was calling me like Porter, like 2014. Mm -hmm. You feel? Know I mean? 
<laughs> and then you got my uncle, my uncle named Rich Porter. They've been calling him that since we were kids and stuff like that. But it was just like, it just happened subconsciously for real, just from different people in my ear. Then me thinking about my childhood, thinking about the people I looked up to and shit like this. So everything all uh, kind of like blended together when we came up with. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there may be a few, there may be some people, because I'm actually from North Carolina originally. I've been in Virginia for a long time, but like my following yeah. is in different places. So for those people who might not be familiar with Fresh Porter, how would yeah. you introduce yourself to them? <laughs> Introduction of Fresh Porter, man, you gonna get authenticity. You gonna get, you gonna get good music. I mean, you gonna get a lot of fun. You feel me? Wherever I'm at, uh, just approach me, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, mm-hmm. you don't, don't feel like uh, you can't approach me, I'm approachable. I'm mm-hmm. approachable by my business, I'm an entrepreneur first. I'm a businessman first. You know, the music always gonna be my passion, but I'm a businessman, I'm a father. Uh, and you feel what I'm saying? Like, uh, I'm that motherfucking nigga. You know? yeah. <laughs> but no, uh, real, real talk though, man, like, I'm, I'm humble as ever, you feel what I'm saying? I've been through a whole lot in my life, so. Like now I'm just at the point where I'm just kind of like trying to conquer everything that, that's put in front of me, every obstacle I've been through, uh, any, 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 anything that I feel like they got in my way, I didn't overcame it. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So when you see me, man, just know it's it, it, everything I handle over here. Uh, yeah, you, you know, um, Porter, um, everybody got a story. You yeah, know, everybody got a story and I'm not overly familiar with yours. I'm kind of familiar, but I'm not overly familiar with yours. But I think that's part of what hit me in the beginning when I didn't, you know, when I wasn't yeah. familiar with you. And then all of a sudden, you know, what I'm saying you just burst it on the scene. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Can you can you share some some things about your story in regard to, you know, about your past? That's really that, you know, I guess the ingredients that you put, that stirred up and that was able to go into the music that was able to immediately just get you, you know, the recognition that, that seemed to happen. To me, it seemed like it just happened like out of, out of overnight. Yeah, like- uh, I know it wasn't that easy, but it appeared to me like one day I was just like, yo, you don't know who Fresh Porter is? No, Fresh Porter, that's, that's who you need to know. And then I started paying attention and then I couldn't, I couldn't miss you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, really, like it's just like I said, it's been a long process. Like I've been, I've been doing this for for a long a while now. Yeah, I've been doing this, doing this for a minute. But like basically everything, like my roots come from. You know what I mean, being in the streets and shit like that, and running the streets, and it always like all the older dudes, all the OGs and shit, always told me like, hey, boy, it's something special about you. You feel what I'm saying? Like, like, like you the one, you the one, you the one. Even when I was rapping back then. I would kind of like doing it, but I won't really doing it. You know how you just want to do something, with, you ain't really into it. Like, yeah. but once I figured out, like, I once I realized my potential with it, and then like going to jail, doing a jail bids, uh, facing a life sentence, uh, then going doing four years in prison and shit like that, it, it make you it make you change your whole perspective. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, People, you feel what I'm saying? Their life, life and death experiences, and all that, all that type of shit, I always tied to it. Just make you want to change your life. Like having kids, you feel what I'm saying? Being a father, all that make you want to change your life. And I had people who, who I who who love me, but they just couldn't deal with me because of what I was into. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They couldn't deal with me. They not, they wouldn't turn their back on me. But it's like they just washed their hands. Like, look, man, like you got to get it together. So it's really just something that, that that make my family want to be proud of me, wait my peers, want to look up to me. You know what I mean? Just get inspiration and hope to whoever might have went through the similar things that I'm in. I ain't trying to glorify the lifestyle that I live with. It's my store. I got a unique store. You feel what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. I feel like the world need to hear this because it might be somebody going through what I went through or even worse. So hopefully I bring motivation and inspire them. Well, for sure it is. I mean... Like I said, man, I, it's interesting that we're having this conversation today and it wasn't planned this way uh, in, in the big picture, but I'm glad that it's gonna carry out this way because I'm interviewing you yeah. and then I'm interviewing the mayor of Petersburg on Wednesday. Um, yeah. <laughs> what's his name? Stan Parham. Yeah. And then I'm interviewing 
uh, rail with dot com music. So like right yeah. now, the, I got the, the I'm, I don't know, man. There's something special about Petersburg to me, man. I just got done interviewing Uriah, you know, about a month ago. Um, so let's let's stay let's stay there. While I'm in Petersburg, let's just stay there, man. Um, yeah. It's some, it's, to me, it seems to be something special about Petersburg uh, right now, particularly. Is that is that where you was born and raised? Yeah, Petersburg, Virginia. It, it's something special. I mean, for those people who don't know, and I say it all the time, like Petersburg has a very interesting history. Um, yeah, yeah. And it goes back further than I even know. I mean, just from the standpoint of where it's physically located, you cannot go, you cannot drive to Atlanta, if you south on 95 without going through Petersburg, if you coming from, you know, the north, you can't drive to New York without passing through Petersburg. It's an interesting place. It's, it's, it's been known as a hub for a lot of yeah. things. It has a lot of music culture. You know, a lot of people know it's the home of Trey songs, Blair Underwood, Moses Malone, Frank yeah. Mason, uh, Lee Majors, uh, Fresh Porter, as we talking to right now, AWOL, phenomenal producer coming out. I mean, I could keep going. Like, it's got the, yeah. the dude from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air Bel Bel and his wife. Like, there's legends yeah. in Petersburg. Can you speak to me about what you think is so special about the gumbo, you know what I'm saying, in Petersburg? Because you got kids down there that look up to you right now. Yeah, it's crazy to me. You feel what I'm saying? Because it ain't just stopped with me. It ain't just stopped with Trey. It, it it started years ago. You feel what I'm saying? Years ago, we we did like Petersburg. Our population is so small, but there's so much talent that come out of there. And it ain't the it's it's a tough place to be. It's a tough place to like like to come up out of for real. Because like I said, it's so small, but it is it, it's, it's so much so much bullshit with it. It's drug infested. It's a uh, uh, a lot of killings and shit going on, stuff like this. So, like with Petersburg, you just, uh, you know what I mean? It's a lot of diamonds in the rough down there. There's a lot of diamonds in the rough, man. You feel me? I feel like it's important that light gets shined, shined on Petersburg. Like like you said, we got the people who came from out of Petersburg who, who, who made it and stuff like that. But for every three of them, it's three more of those. Yeah. So, so now it... it is is we getting? I feel like we starting to get our just do, and it just look like something happened from out of nowhere with, with uh, with with the talent because the talent been here, the talent been in Petersburg. Now we just got to bring it to the forefront. Yeah, it, bring... it does seem to me, it does seem to me that there's a lot of young talent in Petersburg right now, and I feel like whether it's you. Or you and Kari 1K, or it don't matter really at the end of the day who it is that's gonna. I mean, first off, y'all all got y'all got records already. I mean, you got two hundred fifty thousand streaming right now on YouTube, and that ain't, and I hadn't even looked at your streams. Like I ain't even went to the music streams. It ain't no telling. Yeah. But I mean, you brought Pusha T to Petersburg. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, was, like, I mean, first off, I, and I'm I'm curious of what that was like because. Based off what I saw on the internet, I didn't see no security and nothing. Like, I nah, mean, how you pull up was, in Petersburg and push ice like that? The city show love. It was um, it was a kind of it was a big deal. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna play it down because I I brought people from from every hood out, and there's a lot of smoke in Petersburg. Like, there's a lot of smoke in Petersburg. And, like, we didn't have not one one fight one. Uh, no police came through there trying to break it, uh, break things up. No arguments, none of that. It was just all love. Not one shoot. It was just all love. And like I said, with people from every side out there, even if they didn't come out there and stand for the video, they rolled through. They paid and, and they respected what we had going on, what we did, what we did for the city. You feel what I'm saying? It was just that was an epic moment. That was legendary. You mean you didn't have to? You didn't have to give the police a heads up, like, "Look, this is what we doing." Blah blah blah. Nah, uh, -uh. I I ain't really um, <laughs> no broadcast. <laughs> it, yeah, I broadcasted it, but I ain't, I ain't really <laughs> had too much communication with no police. <laughs> no communication, <laughs> no no police. So I I wouldn't even know how to go about that, to be honest with you. But well, I mean, it's pretty impressive they don't, they don't, though. Of course, they done, they, they done reached out now. Like, I seen them at a few events saying, like, you know, if you want to use the city, 
jail. You want to use the shoe videos and stuff now, but I mean, all my life I was raised like with the police and stuff like that. Like yeah. I always felt like they was against us, but yeah. it's some great, it's some good cops out there who ain't trying to harm our society and, and trying to break us down. So I'm going to build us up, man. I don't have no issue. I don't have no issue with that. But nah, I didn't know. Um, well, I'm glad to hear you say that, man. I think that's important though for for, for a figure like you, particularly, man, because we in a time right now where a lot of people want to defund the police, and obviously there's some there's some police out there that's not. Yeah, the good. Ain't sh- <laughs> yeah, you feel what I'm saying. But hey, hey, all of them not like that. All of them yeah. not like that. And, for the most part, you feel what I'm saying? They just doing their job. I can respect it. They not, they, they didn't come out there trying to harass us. Or, you feel what I'm saying? We weren't doing nothing wrong. We doing all positive stuff. Trying to, uh, you know what I mean? Trying to trying to build a community up, whether it be rapping, basketball, uh, or whatever. You feel what I'm saying? But like, but they trying- they actually call you though now and be like, yo, you can you you can use the you can use the uh, station <laughs> for a video. Uh, I seen them. I seen them at an event. I seen them at an event we had. We had in the on 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 Bank Street. And it was, it was crazy because like I'm like man, they know who I am. So they 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 car. Uh, one of my partners was like, look, I want to introduce you to the chief of police. I'm like, for what? <laughs> <laughs> for what? You feel what I'm saying? But it, but I gotta start understanding that I, I ain't in that life no more. That yeah. that I. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't doing the shit that I used to be doing. So. Uh, it was our love. It was our love, I guess. You feel what I'm saying? They they like what I'm doing for the city of Petersburg and stuff like that. And they took my head to me and they, they supported it. So, That's what's yeah. up, man. That's what's up, man. So, it's, 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 it's just a growth process. A growth process, really. I'm just still trying to kind of like grow into who I'm becoming. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that sounds very, I mean, you sound very, you sound very authentic and, and, and transparent. I mean, you definitely are ascending. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. developing, man. Yeah. Um, but but I want to keep it on Petersburg just before we go. Like, um, I mean, you brought Pooh Shiesty through. Yeah. Talk talk to me a little bit about that that whole that record. Oh, that was lit, and it was some idea for my for my for my for my for my big home, man. Rest in peace, Dom Jigger. Like. When I was like, I had a, I had a vision. I wrote it down because when dog died, it kind of it kind of fucked me up for real. Like it, 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 because it is unexpected. You feel what I'm saying? Especially somebody that was almost like COVID down to us in Petersburg. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It was it was the equivalent to that in Petersburg because it's unexpected. It's out the blue. Yeah. And, and, and you feel what I'm saying? Like he gave my first show. My first paid show came from dog. He gave my first paid show. Mm-hmm. So. And by him from from being from the Heights and stuff like that, like we grew up going to Lee Park playing basketball and stuff like that. Dog ain't played basketball at all, but you always felt this presence there. He on the sideline, he joined that. You feel he was just somebody that everybody gravitated to. Uh, he was somebody that people we looked up to. You feel what I'm saying? He always did stuff for us, did stuff. For everybody, man, I was just a good dude, so I wanted to pay homage to him. I had a vision to do a a whole mixtape and name it Dog Jiggle for him. But when I came, when I came home, I mean, start I hit the ground running, and some of my goals got misplaced, and I was like, I pushed it off, pushed it off until I heard the song. I was just like, you know what, this is it right here. And if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it big for Dog. Like I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna have that. So I was just like, shit, when I do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put. All right, as soon as I heard, I said, "Yeah, I'm gonna put Shice on this." I called my dog Keon. Keon put it together for me, uh, and shit, everything turned out great, man. Like I said, we bought the whole set out for dog. We bought the whole set out for me. It ain't even really had nothing to do with me. It was more so paying homage to him and the record taking off. So, but bro, like, you plugged in. Come on, man. You sound very humble right now. Like I'm gonna put Shiesty on it. Like, t- how do you just pull Shiesty out? I mean, come on. Like I don't know anybody else got him. Yeah, man, it's a it's a couple dudes of rich gallop too. Like it ain't just me. Like money talk. Like if you want to be honest, like like money talk in the industry. I'm an independent artist myself, so like I put the money behind myself, or me and my partners, we might come up with something and put it together and shit like that. 
but man, money talk when it's in the industry and you're an independent artist and stuff like that. And people see who see eye to eye with you, like they from the same type of walk we from. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Petersburg, like Memphis, in so many ways, our culture might be a little different, but it's the same type of stuff going on down there. So mm-hmm. yeah, so it was just like it was just something we seen out of eye. And I just like I said, it's just like the deal with authentic people, you feel what I'm saying? People I li- I actually listen to, I actually listen to him. You feel what I'm saying? I listen to Dolph, I listen to Boosie, I listen to Rich the Kid, listen to Pusha T, I listen to Trey Song. You know what I mean? So I always wanted to do some I do songs with artists that I actually listen to, that I actually like, who I feel like I can relate to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like this, so. so so while we name dropping a little bit, anybody else you can we can anticipate saying you want to feature with soon? I mean, yeah, yeah, pretty much that, but um, pretty much the names I just mentioned. Um, I got records with all them guys, but uh, shit, me solo, I'm trying to put my guys on. I'm yeah, trying yeah, to put I mean, I, I got it's a moment, bro. Though I just want to make sure. So we we got music with you and Trey coming. Yeah, I got some with Trey. Yeah, yeah. We got, got music Trey. with you and Push coming. Yeah, I got records with him. Oh, Dolph too? Yeah, that's old. I did that five years ago with Dolph. Bro, I mean, I, 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 I'm not familiar with the whole catalog. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? But I'm sitting, but I'm sitting here just continue. I'm getting, I'm more, I'm just getting more impressed. Like, that's big, bro. Yeah. That's big. That's like I said, I've been, doing, I've been doing this a long little while now. So, like, me, by me doing, I, like I said, I did something with them. That was five years ago right there. But yeah. But like I said, back then I wasn't taking the music serious for real. Like, I, it was just something to do because having a couple of dollars, I had a couple of dollars or whatever. And it was, like, I, I did it for the girls, really. Like, I know the girls like you doing doing that when you when you got jury and, and flat cars and, and you can rap too. Like, come on, man. Yeah. You feel me? But I seen how, I seen how far I could go. You feel me? So I think I did like like 10 million views on, uh, on World Star. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my first album, Walking Walking to Porterville, a lot of people say it's a classic. You feel me? I like a lot of man. She, even my even my my record, uh fuck going on. Like I did for I left after right after I did no records, I went to prison and did four years. When I came back, that record was still circulating in the clubs. So you feel me? Shout out to all the DJs who held it down, like Steezy Sleep, Foot, all them guys, you feel what I'm saying? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was definitely like some like it was, it was it was a big deal when I came home and I ain't, like a lot of people leave and they lose it or they come back and they try to find their way. I ain't want to be one of them guys. You feel what I'm saying? One dude come back and they like man, bro burnt out. He ain't, he can't get back the way he was. Shit like he did. So I just kept my grind on. I know I ain't stopped grinding when I was in there. I constantly writing writing music, uh, calling home just to see what's going on, listening to other people. And shit like that, just to see what the sound is, how it's developing, what's changing. So when I came home, it was like, I'm right back to it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. You mentioned you're an independent artist. Um, yeah. I'm curious, like, are you comfortable re- remaining an independent artist and just getting to the money that way? Or do you want to sign a record away? Like, what, what do you, what's ideal for you? Man, whatever makes sense. You obviously get into the money. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of money. I'm trying to get a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Get a lot of money, but I'm, I'm getting a little. I'm getting a little bit of paper. But uh, not real shit though. Whatever makes sense. To, whatever make the most sense for me and, and my family and my loved one and stuff like that. I'm not opposed to a deal, but I'm a labor on on my own labor, and I feel like everything that a labor doing for me, I can do for myself. But it wouldn't hurt to have that machine behind it because of a lot of things that I don't know. Yeah. Today. You feel what I'm saying? So a yeah. partnership more so than me signing with somebody, but a, a, a good partnership or something like that, that'll make sense. Or, I mean, however, like I said, whatever the best situation that come about it for me and my family or, and my guys, you feel what I'm saying? Because I ain't the only one with a dream. Yeah. I got younger look up to me and they got dreams too. You feel what I'm saying? So I, <clears throat> I gotta get my. I know I gotta get myself in the door first, but I never lose sight of uh, who looking up to me and who 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 need my help. You feel what I'm saying? Who yeah. who looking up to me to help them? Yeah. Get to a spot. I mean, I yeah. never do. I never do that. Well, yo, the the music is there, and. Yeah. 
again, these are all my questions. This is off the top of the head, man, but you're an intriguing person, man. I can't help to ask, you know, because the, the direction is going based off what I'm feeling here, man. You, you're connected, you're plugged. Um, the music is there. I'm just curious from your perspective. I don't get the impression that you're the, you're the type of person that looks for handouts. You know what I'm saying? I would yeah. imagine you've worked for everything that you've accomplished. Um, yeah. But but you are in a space right now where resources are probably within reach. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, they come around. They around. <clears throat> Man, you know what's the craziest, what's the craziest thing to me? <laughs> Man, like, I spent... I don't know, like, I don't, I can't even name the amount of money just to get get buzz and get popping and stuff like that for me to start getting to a point, uh, a point, and, and stuff becoming free. <laughs> that's the, like, <laughs> that's the, like some of that stuff like that is kind of like it, it's kind of like mind boggling to me, but it just made me want to explore more. Like, man, what else out there for me? What else the world got for me? I think like, that's now, game though. That's game because yeah, a lot of artists I don't think realize yeah, that they need to invest in themselves. Yeah, most definitely. And like I'm learning, like it's really not free. You feel what I'm saying? Fair exchange because mm -hmm. I'm becoming a bigger artist and stuff like this. So I'm realizing like my presence in, in certain stuff or just my voice on on certain things is starting to mean a lot to people. You feel what I'm saying? I got kids eight, nine years old stopping me at gas stations asking me to take a picture. Mm -hmm. Like stuff like or asking for some of my merch. Mm -hmm. I got my, my kid, my kids. They want. They start wanting to do music. My kids, my kids made a song because they got inspired by me, and I know they watching me. So now it just got me conscious of the people who paying attention, and I got to be a role model to them. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that's nice. I, that's I, nice to hear, man. I like it. I like it personally when I hear artists, athletes, entertainers, people who are in the limelight for whatever their area of, you know, fame or expertise is. I like it when they feel obligated to identify themselves as a role model. Because to me, yeah. that takes, to me, that's a person that has a sense of ownership and responsibility and knowing that as a public figure, it comes with certain expectations. And it's not like you're, it's not like, you know, and I put myself in that same position. It's not like a, we can't do wrong because yeah, I, even right. when we do wrong, those those mistakes provide examples for other people to know how to do right. But yeah. it's, it's just taking ownership and acknowledging that you have a responsibility to your community. Obviously you have kids and kids who watch you and uh, you take that serious. So I think that's very commendable. Well, definitely. Like, like I said, man, I embraced it. I embraced that because like, I had people that we had people to look up to, but a lot of people we looked up to was like, 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 you know, of course I had my family, like my dad and my uncles and stuff like that to look up to and other people, but a lot of dudes I had to look up to was like, <laughs> I'm looking up the athletes, people I probably never meet, Michael Jordan, LeBron James. Uh, mm -hmm. Now it's not out of the for me to reach them, probably meet them one day in the, in the near future, but you know, back then when you were a kid, I'm looking up the sport. I wanted to be an NBA player. I'm looking up to them. You feel what I'm saying? Hoping that one day I can get to them. Yeah, I'm seeing them on TV. I'm looking at my favorite rivals, Jay Z, uh, uh, Gucci Mane, uh, whoever. You feel what I'm saying? I'm looking up to them guys, and I'm just like, damn. You feel what I'm saying? It gave me inspiration. Like, damn, I can do what they doing. Mm -hmm. you feel what I'm Hopefully, somebody looking at me like, man, I can do what what he doing. Especially like somebody who really like. Like I said, we've been been through a little bit, and like I said, it's just resilience. For real. Mm -hmm. it don't matter where you're from, what you've been through, or how much how much pain you had, or even if you had you not had a shit. I had a good life too. You know what I mean? I got the good and the bad. I got I got to see both sides. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I just want to be a role model. Period. You feel what I'm saying? And I know I might not be the best role model. You feel what I'm saying? Like I said, I ain't glorifying. The things I done did, it's just my store, my unique store. Mm -hmm. So like I said, there's other people who probably got, who might have a similar store to me and might feel like I'm a role model for them. So yeah, yeah, I just want to make make that happen for them. Uh, what other what other what other artists right now do you are you listening to? 
Like, what's what do you listen to when you get in the car? Oh, man, like, lately I've been playing. Uh, I've been playing Le Dirk, Le Dirk new album. Mm-hmm. I, I, I identify with that. Like he talking about stuff that I done been through or I done witnessed. Oh, uh, playing um, BGF Dre, Dre Brown new album. He got a song in there called "The Street." The Street is just, it just, it just touch, it touch you. You feel what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it's a true, I know it's a true story. Um, Wise the Goat just dropped a new album. Um, well, well, I still listen to Nipsey Hussle. Mm-hmm. It's a good game when I'm in my business mode, trying to figure out the next business plan, the next business move. Um, shit, man. I've been listening to a lot of guys, but I'm in album mode right now. So a lot of stuff I've been listening to myself, watching my stuff, just studying my craft, see what I can get done. Mm-hmm. To, like elevate from what I've been doing and what I did wrong here that I got correct did. You feel mm-hmm. me? Just real. What, what about Virginia artists? What Virginia artists do you feel like right now are hot? Uh, I got the names I mentioned like Dre, Boz, but uh, of course, Young Crazy. Young Crazy, that's my that's my dog. I, I rock. We seen y'all in Atlanta together recently. So that's that was my next question. I was gonna get back around because I, I I feel like y'all got something coming. Y'all got a project yeah. coming. I know. Oh, uh, we got a collaboration. Y'all got an yeah. EP coming. No, not a, not an EP. We got a, we got a record. We got a record we put together. It's going on my album. Me, him, and Car One K actually. Okay. Yeah. So like, I feel like that was some that was some good for for you know what I mean it's for for some of the top. The hottest Virginia is out right now. For, sure. all of them together, for everybody to come together. Because a lot of people might look at it like we, we might be in competition because we are from the same place and we all got the same goals and aspirations. But like, why not just come together? Oh, shit, you feel yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah. wish more, I wish more people would do that, man. To me, that's how we win. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And, and just and shameless plug, the Randy Wilson podcast wants to be the narrator. You know what I'm saying to to to, doc, to document these stories. Oh, hey, I can't forget about my dog. He was just on your show. Me and Delk got some. Me and Delk got a me and Delk got an EP together. Oh, That's sure. my dog. That's my dog. You feel what I'm saying? Like like for real, for real. Yeah, me and Delk, we got an EP together. Uh, man, we knocked it out in one night. Real talk, one night, one one long night. He one of the people, one of the few people who can match my work at. You feel what I'm saying? Like me and him linked up. I think we went in probably like 12, left out like five, like four, like maybe like four in the morning and knocked the whole EP out in one night. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's unheard of. Wow. No, I'm assuming everything. off the top. Yeah, everything from scratch. When are we gonna get that? Oh, that's coming soon. I think he he about, I'm about to drop, I dropped March. And I think he dropped it soon. I don't know what date he got on it, but yeah, like we about to. Y'all making, daddy man, let me be honest with you, man. Y'all making some power moves, man. It's I don't. I was on some clubhouse conversations, man, last night. I don't know if you've been on the app much. Yet. Well, I think I saw you on there. I think. You time, I, 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 mean, I be in and out of it for real, because uh, I I feel like a lot of politics, and then every time I log on there, I hear my name, so I don't want to get uh, yeah. Be, Good stuff about me, so I don't want to get the big head syndrome because people talking. So I try to like keep. Wait, if it's but like I definitely go in there like to get, get mentorship and, and, and network with people. I'd be on Clubhouse, and uh, I don't know, man. I feel like some guys I'd be on there having conversation conversation with they show on their age, and and I'm I'm getting older myself, okay. So I'm not trying to avoid that, but they showing their age when they talking about what Virginia's not doing, what, you know, Virginia, this, Virginia, that. I think they missing it, that Virginia, when it comes to hip hop for a certain demographic, and I'm saying probably 37 and older, <laughs> you, you might have, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of people missed their mark. A lot of yeah, people's yeah, time yeah. has came and gone. Yeah, yeah. But if you younger, and if you not yeah. younger, you can be 34, 33, it don't matter how you offer, but if you have the ability to reach teenagers or young people, like you got, you able to reach young people with your music. Yeah, yeah. They miss, they miss, and they, I, I think a lot of people in these conversations are not realizing that the younger generation is doing things in this hip hop industry for Virginia that 
the older guys never had the, never accomplished. And yeah. we got to pay homage and respect to the young folks. You know what I'm saying? The Kari 1Ks, the Fresh Porters, the Young Crazies, um, the G Sambos, the Trap Tie. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Or Kiddo. Like, these guys have figured out a formula that the street <laughs> has just, you know, I mean, it's like, they, they've t- you've taken up. I mean, you got all this. You see, I think older guys was focusing on radio. They was focused on industry. They was focused on labels. Young guys have figured out how to get turn the street into their fans, and and how to buy their music. And as a result of that, look at the look at the social media numbers. The yeah. Social media numbers don't lie. And I'm not talking to. I'm not. I mean, I'm. I, but you also can look at streams. The numbers yeah. don't lie. And I mean, that's. To me, that's where I feel like a lot of these old heads, they in the dark. They missing it. They don't realize, like, nah, the time is now. We just, our time is gone. Man, real, real talk, man. Like, like I said, like, I pay, like I said, man, you got to pay homage to the ones who, like, lay down the law for us, for real. You feel what I'm saying? Lay down the law. But, man, you got young coming up, 17, 18, 19, man. They millionaires off of music. You feel what I'm saying? I always say rap, bro, is the easiest job. It's a tough job. It's a it's a tough job because it's dangerous. But for the most part, for people like me, is it who don't want to get paid just for being yourself? Being yourself, talking about your life. And that's how I always try to preach it to to my young one. My youngest one rap. Yeah, my youngest one rap. I just shot a video uh yesterday for with one of the artists, like, I'm trying to help grow him and bring up. He only 18 years old, but he's he's super talented. He rap better than me. You feel what I'm saying? He's just figuring out how to song structure and stuff like that. So I'm explaining to him, like, like, bro, getting checks for being yourself, like, you feel what I'm saying? For being yourself, telling your story to the world, uh, for doing what you love to do. Like, that be, to me, that be going to jail. For, for doing what you feel like you got to do when there's other options, you feel what I'm saying? It's other options that you can you can do in the industry. I see the industry embracing, embracing everybody who, embracing the younger crowd and who can bring the younger crowd in and stuff like that because a lot of them, when you think about YouTube, uh, you think about the artists like NBA Youngboy. My kids watch him nonstop. No, nah, stop. They can watch young NBA. Young. I be, I'm talking about to the point where I be like, look, man, I'm not listening to that song again. You feel what I'm saying? But they can watch him. And you might not agree with how he, li- how he living and all uh, social media and stuff like that uh, with the type of lifestyle. He, but you got to respect that's how he feed his family. You feel what I'm saying? You got you to gotta respect that that's how we feed our family. So a lot of the older guys, like I said, they someone might get lost in time a little bit, and or they might have uh, been somebody who didn't get their shot or feel like they didn't get their shot. But everybody get their shot is whether you can capitalize on it or not. You feel what I'm saying? So I feel like everybody get they get their chance to shine is on if you capitalize and capture the moment. You know what I'm saying? They might not have captured the moment, and I mean someone be salty, but someone might just tell you, look, man, like. That's why I went wrong. That's what I feel like you can do to level up. And then just some of them just, just gonna always have that type of have that envy. Yeah. Envy because they couldn't they couldn't accomplish what they look at your accomplish. Yeah. Well you 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 definitely are on you definitely accomplishing a lot, bro. I mean, I, I take my hat off to you. Um I think it's been very impressive. And the thing to me is like you just you just You've been doing it for a minute, but I feel like you are just on the verge of really starting something serious. And uh, you know, I, I believe you're gonna. You know, a lot of people, man, they make they make it and they don't really turn back. I get the impression though from you that through your journey, you plan on putting your city on your back and 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 continuing to show that love and, and pay homage to, to Virginia. I get my I get my city on my back. I got I feel like I got Virginia on my back. Because when you think about, and I mean not just me, of course, but I know I got Virginia on my back. Because when you think about Virginia, like they always say, we like we lack our own identity and stuff like that. When I think about the culture of Petersburg, uh, where I'm from, man, you feel what I'm saying? How we came up, just our slang of talk, whatever, you feel what I'm saying? We, 
we need somebody to bring that to the forefront. That's why I named my, my album on the end, on my dead nigga. That's how, that's what we use in Petersburg. I don't, I'm, I've been, and I've been to a lot of, a lot of places, man, a lot of different states, uh, down there to travel this whole US, everywhere it is to be popping. I can say that. And I never heard no type of culture, no type of slang, like little old Petersburg, Virginia. You feel what I'm saying? We walk different. We talk different, you feel what I'm saying? We a little different, we got a different vibe. But like I said, we talented, you feel what I'm saying? Even in sh- up the, the Richmond and, and and different parts of Virginia, you feel what I'm saying? Virginia, man, find what's unique about you and your, and how you came up, your culture, and, and bring it to the forefront. That's why you see, see dudes like Chicago, oh, who, the word just, the word thought, that's worldwide now. Mm-hmm. It started right there with like Chief and, and Dirk and them. Or you think about uh, when they say 12 down in Atlanta, you feel what I'm saying? Now everybody's saying that. So we got to just find what's unique about us. And, and own it. You feel what I'm saying? And own mm-hmm. it. And own it. That's who we are. You never know who you can influence in the world. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm a black leader. I know I'm, I'm a black leader. And that's why I say it's important that throughout my journey, I be myself. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't want to uh, put on a facade uh, and, and try to fit into all these different types of groups, all these different types of crowds, because they might look at me and, and, and feel like I'm, I got something that they like, or that they want to emulate and try to be like. So it's important that you be yourself because you never know who you influence. Yeah, let me tell you what I'm enjoying about this conversation. Is that and 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 it's really the principle behind why I like to do these interviews, man. Is that a lot of times artists people only get familiar with the music, and yeah. anytime that you can get an artist to sit down and just talk and and share a little bit of themselves and and help people get familiar with the man or the woman behind the music, to me it showcases a whole other side of them that for the fan even makes it that much more of an experience and why they want to. Now go, you know, go through the discography, go through the catalog, get familiar with the music. And that's that's what's happened to me. Like I've listened to a lot of your music, but this conversation now is like inspiring me to want to go now really dig yeah. more, you know what I'm saying? And and hear your journey through your music, through the whole catalog. And I'm and I'm sure that that's gonna happen with a lot of other people, man. You the next one, man. You the next one. I mean, that's what everyone's saying anyway. And uh Thank you, man, for being on my show, man. I really appreciate it, man. I mean, um, I, you know, people. Sometimes when I tell people that, like, no, nah, man, thank you. Like, it's mutual. I get it. I get it, man. But you gonna yeah. be a star, bro. You know I what I'm saying? It. You gonna be a star. It's a little different when you when you see somebody <laughs> embarking on that stardom. You know what I'm saying? It might not be as you know what I'm saying? I was able to talk to you directly. I might have to go through 25, 30 people the next time in the future to try to get the next episode, man. So yeah. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take heed of this experience and recognize that this is the same brother, man, that you know what I'm saying. He sat down with me in his kitchen, he chopped it up with me, and you know, he spoke yeah. about who he is and, and where he's going. And I believe confidently that I'm gonna see that. I really do. I feel the same about you on your podcast. I see what you're doing. Like, like most definitely, like I, like I pay my respect to it because even getting a platform for people like me to come talk and, and, and to do it just on genuine, like you genuinely, you genuinely rock with me. You feel what I'm saying? You yeah. genuinely listen. You just no matter who just, you feel what I'm saying? You do your research, you listen, yeah. you pay. It ain't, ain't like you just come up with stuff out the flat. And I enjoy, I enjoy that. I enjoy that, bro. I appreciate talk, it. Right? I wish I started doing and this a lot longer. My boy Dell, and I seen you had Dell on it. So when I, when I seen Dell on it, I was like, yeah, bro, like definitely. He did he, he digging in the trenches for us. Like, like he coming sure. to find him. Oh yeah, man, for sure, man. Let me tell you what, I'll, t- I'll tell you about Dell. Like I'd heard of Dell, you know, I'd heard of him, but, yeah. um, and I and I told Dell this and uh, I mean, we had a good conversation about it. I told him, I said, when Glass came out with that whole list, and he got up, you know, he expressed himself. That's the best way. He expressed himself. That was um, bad. 
<laughs> my boy Spain, uh, but when he got he real dog though. He had he had a he's a little real real spill though, man. Like, Don't put that work in. I seen Yo, that first time. It may, but this is the thing. You know, I told Dell, you know, maybe I would have suggested you approach it differently. Maybe. But at the yeah. end of the day, you but the end of the day, you your own man and you do what you do. Yeah. For me, it made me go check the numbers. It made me so I feel like to some degree it worked in his benefit because yeah. I went to go check the numbers and then I saw the numbers. I was like, well, dang, <laughs> like the numbers are there. Maybe I need yeah. to go check this brother out and see what I'm missing. And and for me, particularly, like I have to, I had to be intentional about going to check because what I'm learning as a podcaster is I'm learning how to go after what the people want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I may, you know, I may have not came across that just based off my ear personally. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But other people's ear influenced me to go listen to what they like because the numbers don't lie. Most definitely, most definitely. And that put me on a whole different, it put me on a whole different situation to really see that again, these young folks, man, are killing it with the numbers. Like yeah. it's on a whole nother level. Yeah, Look, I mean, my era of rap was like, you know, I'm a big Nicholas F uh, fan of music. You know what I'm saying? He was on, he was on uh, Freestyle Friday, right? Yeah, yeah. So that I'm, I'm, I'm probably more of like a boom bap type yeah. of fan of music, right? And that's my thing. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the music right now that's going to pop and that's going to really grab yeah. media attention is not paying music, really. It's, it's, yeah. uh, it's gonna be street music. It's gotta be fun music. You know what I'm saying? It's got party music. Yeah. It's gotta be. It's gotta have something. It's ever everything's a vibe now, right? That's just what it yeah. is. And then, like, and that's when I try to hit. I try to hit every angle with my music. When I come through on, like, uh, you got you get to pain. You get some for the clubs. You get some for the ladies. You get people want to hit conscious rap sometimes. So they, mm -hmm. it ain't necessarily got to be super lyrical, but just something to let, let people know that you're aware of what's going on. That's how I came out with a song like Trap Last Matter. I, I did a video that, just to let them know, like, I'm not, it's not like, like I'm not aware of people like Breonna Taylor uh, and other people who lost their lives to the police bullshit. I ain't gonna say brutality, this is police on bullshit. You feel what I'm saying? So I always wanted to, so I was conscious of that too. Man. Like I said, just hit them from every different angle. Then you got something you can turn up to. You, I got my ratchet music, of course. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, but you you want to cover all bases. So it ain't. I'm a one stop shop. That's why I feel like about my music. I'm a one stop shop, man. You got every situation or every type of mood that you can feel like. You can come. You can come there and play my CD and start it from start to finish it. Listen to it and say, okay, I'm going through this today, or I feel like this today, or I'm stepping out flat today. You feel what I'm saying? Whatever, however you feel it. You feel what I'm saying? I wanna, I wanna get money today. You feel what I'm saying? Hey, talk to me Definitely. about the merch. Talk to me about the merch. Uh, Trap Malahada, it came from when I first came home, the first song I did was First Night Out. Uh, I ran through it, was really, really just like a freestyle, me punching in and stuff like that. Some of that I had wrote, some of most of our freestyle. And I dropped the song, and the song had such a good response. It was called First Night Out, but the, the line that kept on catching people's attention was, I was trapping my little hot out, trapping my little hot out. So I heard every time I see somebody in the street or in the mall, whatever they go there, I'm trapping my little hot out, boy, I'm trapping my little So once I kept hearing it, uh, I was talking to my homegirl. She was just like, you know what would be a good idea? If you if you made shirts that say try my lot out. And I promise I'm ready, I'm about to restock soon. I'm about to restock soon and get more. But every time I from the time I put them out, they never last the 24 hours. I don't care if I get them in bulk or I started small with maybe 30, 40 shirts. It never lasted not even half a day. You feel what I'm saying? Just from uh, just from that. I I was like, all right, that's still pushing the song. And it's it's good, it's good marketing, you feel what I'm saying? To where even if you type it in on YouTube, uh, you can type Trapping My Lahada on YouTube. That's not even the name of the song, but my video will come up. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. it, like, that was just something like, it's, it was just a, it was just a branding uh, marketing move that, that kind of like helped push the song, but people like, a lot, a lot of people took it to, 
And like I said, it don't have to be just uh, trapping my lahada don't mean just uh, uh, in the streets or hustling or selling this and that. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you go to job, but this is a trap that you're doing right here. This this you trapping your lahada right now. Yeah. Like I said, yo, somebody working a nine to five, you cutting grass, cutting hell, uh, selling candy, selling shoe strings. Uh, yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> whatever, man. You trapping your lahada, man. Whatever you putting putting your heart into that, that you passionate about and that you feel like it's gonna help it's gonna help benefit you and your family. That's what I meant by that. Hey, what, let us know where we can go cop, cop some merch at. Uh, I got the travel, if you go on Instagram, travel my little hot out page, everything I'm doing and it, it helped me make, it helped me make genuine fans like hand to hand. Like I ain't doing e-commerce or nothing with my merch. Uh, you all the merch, I'm gonna pull up on you myself majority of the time and it's it's good it's good interaction with your fans because yeah. I have some fans who just who just want some fans wanted to meet me and see it but like it is he is who he say he is and I pull up and they're like okay and is it in some people it's good networking too because you never know who you might meet. You feel Yo, what I'm saying? I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you up man. I'm gonna hit you up man. I try to support everybody you know what I'm saying to support me and I like I like buying I like wearing statement brands you know what I'm saying that that I have a connection with the 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 person behind it, so I'll be in touch with you very soon on that one. Most definitely, man. I put one together for you, like yeah. Dang, Appreciate dang. it, yo. Before we close, man, I like to close it the same way. I like to ask random questions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just keep it real simple. Don't think too much. You know what I'm saying? Just be impulsive. You know, just random yeah. questions. Not nothing too crazy. Um, yeah. Chicken or fish, bro? Chicken. Chicken. I wanted to ask you this question before and I didn't, but I think it's a real, it's a real serious question. I asked Delt the same thing. He told me patience. When you was away, what did you learn the most over that time? Value your time. Definitely value your time. Of course you learn patience, but you learn what to do with that patience because you got to be real patient to be in there. Mm -hmm. So you got to make the most of your time. Like mm -hmm. that's why I I feel like I never, I never stopped the grind. I never stopped grinding because when you're in there, <laughs> man, that shit, that shit get real. That shit get real, and you got to really do something with your time, or you gonna be, you'll drive yourself crazy. So definitely value on my time. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that, and I think that says a lot. I mean, to me, I've not been in that situation really, um, but I work with people who have mental illness, and I, I can't imagine, to be honest with you, how. I know a lot of people, including myself, with that type of with time, it I, I can imagine it. It would it could drive a lot of people crazy. It really could. Yeah. So to it's make it to make it through it's strong, the only thing I ain't crazy because I'm talking to you with some sense. Man, I ain't got it all. <laughs> I ain't got it all. But you know what I'm saying? It teaches you how to cope with that because. Yeah, you, and there, it's just you and the man in the mirror. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You get to face yourself at your at your rawest form, without nothing. You feel what I'm saying? They strip mm -hmm. everything away from me. So, mm -hmm. like, yeah, it definitely will drive you crazy. So when you me. was when you was a young fresh porter, man. Yeah, who, who I, was, your, I was a little fresh back then. So tell me, who was a little fresh's celebrity childhood crush? Ah. Uh, <laughs> I ain't talk. I ain't talking about you know the girl, hey. someone from over in Hopewell or Petersburg. I ain't talking about nobody around the way. We ain't gonna expose your business like that. Oh no, 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 no. my childhood crush always, man, I always been. Man, no, no lie. Like when I was young, man, I used to love uh, Tiana Taylor. I used, man, I seen her like uh, Sweet Sixteen when I was young. Her, uh, uh, La La, nah, Nunu. No, no, I'm tripping. Oh, no, yeah, no. for sure, for sure. ATA, yeah. rest in yeah. peace, Nips. I was on, the, I was on your, on your grave. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, uh, shit. Man, I'm, I'm, I've been crushing on a lot. I've been crushing on a lot. I can't just say one. I mean, the thing is, this though. <laughs> so, so look, your, your, your stardom is growing, bro. Your celebrity Jay is growing. The fire. <laughs> who, the chick, you, who'd you say? Jay the Fire. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so you got the chance. You realize that? You got the chance to make some of your celebrity crushes your actual 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, shit, I got a celebrity crush that I'm into right now. So go ahead and you yeah. you gonna bring it you gonna bring it to the forefront or you go at TMZ catch it? Uh they ain't gotta catch it, catch it with trash. <laughs> so yeah, uh, who's your who's your sports team? Sports team, uh which one? Basketball. Uh, uh, Sacramento Kings, bro. I, I kind of hesitate, man. I can't even cap on my boy. Uh, Sacramento Kings, man. I've been wow. a fan of like wow. uh, Jason White Chocolate, man. Jason Williams, man. He, he came in to the, to the NBA by storm. I wanted to ball like him. I told you I want to go to the NBA. So, now I used to love the, the fancy dribbling. And, you know what I'm saying? He put on a show. We just Yo. couldn't never get paid. Lakers, man, ain't no bullshit. I ain't gonna lie, man. I never, I never expected you to say Jason, the Sacramento Kings, man. Who's your football squad? Them Broncos. We got a championship in the last five years, so I don't want her tonight. You feel what I'm saying? We might be in the rebuilding right now, but you feel what I'm saying? I've been a fan of them since like '96. '96. I ride when they won their first championship against uh, against Green Bay. They've been my team since then. Yeah, gotcha. I ain't no. Yo, three three words to describe Fresh Porter. Uh, fun, authentic, ambitious. All right, last question. In twenty twenty, well, I got two questions. In in twenty twenty one, Fresh Porter will succeed. And my last question. Let it ain't really a question. It's like a you know shameless cameo for me. Let people know why they should rock with the Randy Wilson podcast. All right, cause you ain't, you ain't getting no realer than that. You feel what I'm saying? Like Randy, like well, bro, he gonna keep it. He gonna keep it a book, which he gonna tell you. I feel like you gonna speak your mind. You gonna speak your mind. You ain't gonna hold no punch. I feel like if it was something you felt, you felt like I was doing wrong. That you would speak on it. Yeah. And, and you you would tell me about myself. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. I can do it better. So, like I can say just being authentic. I see eye to eye with people like you, bro. Yeah, well, I appreciate just, that. I appreciate that, yeah. and I, and I'm gonna piggyback off that because I mean, this is I'm looking to you, but I'm speaking to the people. I feel like we. I appreciate that a lot because I feel like we have an obligation as people, Definitely. particularly as black men, to be accountable to each other, whether we know each other or not. For real, we are men. With black men, and if we don't have, if we don't have the ability to be accountable to each other and to speak candidly and speak honestly, we don't have anything. And at the exactly. end of the day, we will deal with the consequences to how the world, you know, speaks to us and responds to us, regardless of our actions. So you know, what I'm saying we need to be we need to be very upfront. And I try to conduct all interviews with respect, dignity, class, because you know. People give their time, you know, to the show, you know what I'm saying, for free, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I feel like people need to be treated, you know, treated with that respect, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. Fresh Porter, man, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show, man. I'm super excited for your Anytime. future, man. Don't forget us, bro. Don't forget us on your way, though. You know what I'm saying? We want to we yeah. wanna be there to journal it. You're going to be on the, something on the water stage next time that comes around, for sure. We know it. And uh, we, we want to be there. That, that there right? Huh? You might know something I don't know. I yeah, know it, bro. I know it. I know it. You know what I'm saying? I know it. I, I know you could be on the stage. And uh, I, I see you building your own stages. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Where you're going to have your own acts opening up for you. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a matter yeah. of time. I can't imagine where you're going to be one year from now. I mean, I can't imagine, but I feel like it's going to be... It's gonna, and we're going to look back on this interview one day. And it's going to be like, yo, this brother really did take off. I mean, I think your takeoff is probably going to be faster than most people's takeoff that we've seen. You already took off. But now it's like the direct, where are you going? Yeah, and, how, and, and, how, and how long is it going to take you to get to that next thing, you know? So. And God willing, man, I'm, I'm going to keep working it. Keep putting it, keep putting in that, putting the putting the work in. Like I said, man, they keep on going. Like my mind, like 
I like I live back in SG, never stop grinding. So that's a lifestyle for me. So I mean, it might take, it might look like it took, it happened, it took all fans, but trust me, it been definitely been a process, man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Now I believe you. All right. Well, yo, man, appreciate Petersburg for t tuning in. Next episode is gonna be with your mayor. I mean, I'm I'm in Petersburg for a minute. So y'all just stick with me. Let me. Oh, I let me, man. Give me the key to the city or something like that. You hey, well, hey, yo, he's next, man. I'm gonna make sure, and and I'm being very intentional about how I'm putting, you know, these interviews around that one, because mm -hmm. I'm trying to bridge. I'm trying to bridge the culture. At the end of the day, Randy Wilson podcast is Virginia's podcast for hip hop culture and dialogue, and I feel like the mayor got to be brought into that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like he got to be. I'm not saying that he's not that. We're gonna find yeah. out. We're gonna find out. And uh, I'm really interested for those out there in Petersburg who are listening. If you have any questions that you would like me to ask the mayor, let me know. Uh, I'm really interested in regard to like where the direction of the city's going. And uh, like I said, I got him grouped around some of the hottest folks right now who's really popping and thriving in, in Petersburg. So I'm hopeful that we yeah. can create some synergy. Most definitely, most definitely, man. It's been my pleasure, man. I appreciate you having me on here, dog. Yeah, I mean, I just appreciate you shining light on Petersburg, period, because we definitely need it, because we've we been a lot going on, man. We're trying to find, trying to find something like that, that like, to look at, like, in, in a good light, man, because uh, there's a lot of shit that, that go on down there that might not make it to the forefront, but trust me, man, we, we yeah. definitely have well, it, hey, on, on my on my account, I can promise you, I will be covering a lot of Petersburg. I think Petersburg, I, you know, I don't know. I don't really say things for people to like me and not like me. I speak my truth. I think Petersburg probably has the most potential of any of the cities in Virginia to really pop. And the reason why I say that is like, you got to look at the history of it. First off, you got more churches in Petersburg than any city in the country per square mile per square foot, whatever, per block, you do. So whether that's whether that's good, whether that's good or bad, or whether that's a bunch of, you know, whatever, the history in it, you know, is rich. Um, and I mean, right, I can name 10 artists in Petersburg right now in conjunction with like an AWOL, you know what I'm saying, the mm -hmm. lead major. Y'all got the production. Y'all got the production in y'all's area. If y'all tap, if y'all tapping in to it, it's there. You got Lee Major beat. Yeah, he did stuff with Hov and everything, bro. I know. You got his. You got a beat by him. Lee Major, nah, he, he ain't. Ha we haven't reached out to each other yet. Ooh, bro. I feel like that'd be crazy. I feel like that'd be crazy, man. I'm definitely familiar. But that's why yeah. I feel like Petersburg can pop because y'all got you. Y'all got your own sound. Yeah, most definitely. And y'all, and y'all, and y'all on the ground for real. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all very connected with the people, with your demographic. I think it's gonna pop, man. I mean, you got Push's attention on it. You got Trey's attention on it. You got, yeah. uh, I mean, the industry's paying attention. I know Davies has a, I know his eyes gotta be on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were on tour with him. So like, I know that, you know, I got my ear to the street. I know it's gonna pop. And the reason why I say yeah, Petersburg yeah. over a lot of other cities, this is just because it's time. It's homegrown. It ain't a transient place. Yeah, it definitely. Not. It's not a, like a big tourist attraction. Or yeah. like, this. Well, like I said, we just got our we got our own culture. We got our own culture. Like I said, I've been to a lot of places, but I never I never been no place like like here, which is home. You know from? Yeah. I've never been like Petersburg, but Virginia. That is just like, like you know they're gonna saying? have you painted on the mural there. So nowhere you want to play. No bad. You don't want to play there now. You know what I'm saying? You don't want too much plan, but the talent that we've grown there, the talent, this is naturally talent, natural talent, whether it be sports, rap, uh, art, uh, shit, man. Even, man, we got geniuses, man. It's people in Fortune 500 companies and shit, man. And yeah. shit, my cousin, like, who come from Petersburg, come from Petersburg, Virginia. So, like I said, man, we, we definitely got a lot of talent there. It might not be the best place in the world to be, but it's definitely home. Yeah, I'm gonna put www.visitpetersburg.com on here just for the <laughs> tourists, you know what I'm saying? And they can go why check you, out that new Fresh Porter. Man, why you doing that? You go to www.portervillebaby.com, man. That's my website. Check out new music, check out uh, videos, uh, 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 photo shoots, um, 
You can email me, email me, contact me, hit me up for merch. You can follow me on Instagram at Porterville Baby. Uh, follow me on Twitter at I am Fresh Porter. Uh, she hit me up on Facebook if you, if you happen to see me out there like that. Or just approach me, like I said. Uh, the when you see me out somewhere, man, just holler at me. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't shit. I ain't, I ain't, uh, I ain't Hollywood. I ain't a blow though. I ain't a blow. I still got a long ways to go, so I'm willing to, willing to ready to work with people. All right, bro. Appreciate you, Porter. We are gonna go ahead and close out. This was episode 58, the Randy Wilson podcast. We'll yeah. be back. See y'all guys soon. I appreciate it. Appreciate you, bro.